Hi, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me on the launch pad with Kerbal X, which is a stock rocket provided in Kerbal Space Program, um, which is actually surprisingly powerful. It's got uh, six boost liquid boosters on the outside that break off an asparagus staging, leaving a main booster, and a pretty good um, upper stage. Now, I've never actually thought of it as much of a um, <clears throat> as much of a powerful rocket getting anywhere. But as it turns out, it really can. So today, I'm going to test how far and what it can actually do. Anyway, now I'm going to um, put the clamps in the bottom stage because I don't like how it fires and then undoes the clamps. Anyway, I'm launching now because last time when I fired it normally, it kind of just went horribly because of the clamps. Um, I am doing this post-commentary because I did do it in-game, but then some stuff went wrong, and as it always does. Anyway, and this is mostly at two times speed. Um, because it was like a 45 minute video otherwise. <clears throat> anyway, as you can see I'm already pretty high up and going pretty fast. It's a really fast rocket. Um, yeah, so I'm starting the gravity turn, just kind of getting this into um, well, just a stable orbit around Kerbin. It is a uh, Kerbal X is actually the first ship I ever docked to a station. I obviously put a docking port on it and some RCS and flew it in. Um, although I wasn't actually entirely aware of RCS controls at the time, so I did it mainly on engines. It went horribly and I smashed some solar panels and <clears throat> yeah, I didn't used to be very good at the game at all. And I'm, yeah, I'm not even sure if I still am. I mean, I'm probably still pretty awful, I mean, compared to some people. <clears throat> Especially if you watch something like Stop, uh, Scott Manley or something. But anyway. And then I use mm, quite a bit of this main stage for most of the circularization <clears throat> because it's powerful and I'm not going to waste fuel because I'm finding out what can Kerbal X do, not what can Kerbal X do while being flown by a bumbling fool, which I'm sure you can consider I am. Anyway, now I'll use about a hundred liters of fuel to kind of circularize my orbit. I think right now, uh, yeah, uh, the first bit, I just see how far I can push my orbit out, like around the sun, and it does get pretty far, as you'll see. And then, and then I land on Minmus. Um, well, I'm gonna, yeah, land on Minmus and come back. Just kind of, the idea is just to see what I can actually do. <clears throat> so yeah, I've got a stable kind of orbit, a fairly low orbit, trying to take max maximum use out of the Oberth effect. Now this ship doesn't actually have an SES, which I don't like for launch. I mean, yeah. You don't really need SAS, but I like to use it. Anyway, I'm going to leave um, Kerbin in prograde. Just it gives you a better idea of how powerful it is. Yeah, I think um, Scott Manley. I, I mentioned his name a lot, but anyway, he says um, that he, well, he doesn't really use SAS, but he says it's just dead weight. I mean, occasionally he uses it, but you know. But I like to use it because I like control. I think I yeah, I'm even flicking on SAS here, even though I don't have it, just because I do. <coughs> Anyway, so I'm just kind of burning out, um, uh, of, uh, burning out, going in curb and prograde, and it's already at like 1.7 million. Now this is at two times, remember, so it didn't go this fast. It was, it was still incredibly fast. Um, but anyway, and it's breaking Muna and Minmus, and we have now got out of the system. That's passing Duna, so we could get a Duna encounter with this ship and probably circularize and maybe land if I put, yeah, as a parachute, I could probably land on Duna, which I don't do now. But there is a Duna window coming up, which I'm hopefully going to do something with, because I was going to go to Moho, but I grossly underestimated, I think you can see that there's a ship at Moho. Um, yeah, I grossly underestimated how much fuel you need to circularize around Moho and screwed up hugely, monumentally, and use MechJeb for planning, and that was really inefficient. Anyway, you can see I got a 28, mi a 28 billion meters away from the sun as my Apple Watch, which is pretty impressive. Anyway, now I'm going to go to Minmus. I'm putting SAS on really quick, um, and Mech Jebs just to see some Delta V stats, and I was I haven't slowed this down actually, but anyway, I don't need to. I just want SAS, and I want to put the clamps in. Well, I'll put the clamps in the launch stage because I just prefer it like that. <clears throat> and I'm actually um, I did have SAS underneath the parachute, but um, I'm going to put a big one on so that it doesn't rip off when the parachute pulls because SAS is a really weak part and if you put it between a parachute and a pod it'll often just break. Anyway, that's all I'm going to do. I'm just going to put SAS on it and move the staging around a bit because I do want to use that um, as Kerbal X. I mean, I could have taken those aerodynamic things off but because they're not really aerodynamic, they're just kind of there to look nice because they don't really have advanced aer aerodynamics on this game. 
Anyway, I've dropped the first stage. But anyway, I wanted to see what it can do, not changing it too much. Anyway, a much nicer launch with SAS, but a little heavier. And yeah, I can do it, as you've seen, without SAS, but I decided um, I might as well. And the nice thing about Curvelex is it has these control services, so you don't actually need RCS for launch. And <clears throat> yeah, those are actually probably, yeah, those are pretty useful having can canards, yeah, canards on it. <clears throat> so if you're building a rocket that you want to maneuver without using too much RCS or extra weight, put some canards on it for launch. But um, don't put them in space, because that does nothing. Hey, anywho, um, yeah, I'm getting my Apple, app Apple apps up and you probably can't see the figures that much because it's two times speed um, because, well now you can, 75,000 because it would have been a really long, boring, tedious video of just going to minimus and it is actually harder to go to the moon land and return because it takes more delta V so it probably would have been a better test to go to the moon but I decided, well I went to the moon like a couple of videos ago so minimus is more fun because it's different and I have a new flag, if you may have noticed, which I'm going to put on Minmus, um, which you'll see. Uh, it's just made with some simple kind of vector tools in my um, <coughs> just kind of basic editing uh, computer. What would you call it? Graphic software. It's a Linux one, and it's called GIMP, which I'm sure many of you will know what that actually is. Um, but I don't know why they call it GIMP. I think it has. Uh, it's just um, I. That each letter stands for something, and it's kind of funny if you like that stuff. Anyway, I've got a stable orbit. Let's stop talking about the names of software. Um, and I'll do a maneuver because I know exactly where I need to be to get to the moon, but not to Minmus. So I'm going to search around with a maneuver. I already have escape, which is kind of a little inconvenient. And I don't know, really know what I'm doing there, but anyway, I'm flicking around. Um, oh, yeah, I accidentally pressed some random button to change something. Anyway, and I'm moving around, trying to. There you go. Now I'm almost at an encounter in 13-ish minutes, trying to get my perigee down. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's about 924 delta V. That's relatively efficient. I mean, I'd probably do it more efficiently, but it's fine. Uh, I'm just going to warp around. It's like a one-minute burn, so kind of split it at 33 seconds. Um, but being the fool that I am, whilst trying to commentate, which I'm not even using because I did do live commentary, but then it all screwed up. I actually go right past, screw it up, and then I just reload uh, because I can't be all done. I was going to cut that out, but you might as well see my mistakes because it's more honest and stuff. And that's an escape. It's really easy to get an escape because, uh, yeah, it's not. you don't need that much delta V. I need a quick moon encounter there, but um, I've completely found where I need to be, as you can probably tell. And then I find some little node things, and there you go. Now I've pretty much got my encounter. Just move it around a bit. Yeah. But uh, Minmus like, orbits at like 6.1 degrees off the equator, which is kind of annoying. So just it's better to launch just at 6.1 degrees if you want to get on the equator of Minmus rather than fumbling around in orbit, burning loads of fuel, unless you have loads of fuel, which I don't think I have enough fuel to do all that in. Carvalex's stage, but yeah. Anyway, so I'm just gonna kind of, yeah, 33 seconds to burn out. And I uh, tend to remove my maneuver nodes relatively um, when I, when my um, delta V gets low, so I can see what's actually happening with my thing more easily without all the distractions of <coughs> the stuff, the maneuvery stuff. But uh, right, you can see it's just getting out right now. I think maybe next I'll do a what can a Falcon Heavy actually do, or at some point, because I did a Falcon Heavy video, and that's doing alright. If you haven't seen it, go and check it out, it's, uh, I'm pretty proud of it. And I said in the video that I could get it to the moon, so I should probably put my money where my mouth is and try and get it to the moon. I'm pretty sure it could take a lander out and possibly return, but I'm not actually entirely sure. Um, and the upper stage isn't powerful, it just really isn't. Oh, and right now I switch to my flag on the moon, because for some reason, when in KSP, when I change spheres of influence um, of gravity, the game crashes because my computer's a douche. Um, so I just switch there and so that it doesn't crash and it's more fluid and I don't have to fumble around being a fool. I'm just kind of warping in until that gets there. And I don't think it takes anything away from the video except seeing a nice flag. Although not my flag, just some random other flag I used. And I'm trying to switch to Kerbal X and realize I'll just go to Space Center. So yeah, that takes some fluidity out of it. 
fluidity is that a word? Maybe, uh, da, my screen's web just went off as I'm trying to commentate. But anyway, I am now coming into Minimus. Um, coming down to Perigee. Uh, just it doesn't take much L to B because it has such low gravity. It's really easy, and you're not going that fast, unlike when you're going around Moho when you actually need a lot more fuel than I took. Anyway, enough about my failed missions. And I think, yeah, I think in a uh, soon video, I'm going to take a ship and a lander out to Duna, have some fun around Duna, maybe put a little rover down. Because I should do something interplanetary, because that's kind of fun. I haven't done that much interplanetary in the whole game, really. I mean, I've done, yeah, I've, I've been to a few planets, because, you know, why not? Anyway, now I decide just to kind of bring my orbit down to kind of do this quickly and I think ah oh, damn it's going to go down on the dark side but it's actually turns out I'm going I'm orbiting clockwise so so that works out good and the nice thing about Mimus is it has these lakes that are obviously at sea level because they're lakes and they're frozen uh, well not frozen I don't know really what the composite of Minmus is but it won't be ice because that'll just evaporate anyway so I'll plan to land on one because that makes it much easier because then I can use the normal altimeter to land rather than the radar one in the capsule. By the way, if you have trouble landing because you're landing on mountains and not in the sea, if you go into the capsule, there's a little altimeter that's radar that shows you your actual altitude, not just your kind of sea level altitude. Anyway, now I'm adjusting, trying to get actually into this big lake so that I can have a nice smooth landing. And I do get a pretty nice landing and then <coughs> screw up a few things. And I've still got quite a lot of fuel, and you don't need much fuel to land on Minmus because really low gravity. And yeah, they do put landing legs on Kerbal X, and that's when I decided, well, this is probably made for landing somewhere else but Kerbin. And it really can, as I can prove. I could probably go to Duna and not get back, but uh, it could act as a transport to Duna, I think. It's a really versatile ship, I never really noticed, never really took, gave it much attention. Anyway, as you can just kind of start to see ground scatter as I'm about 3k over the, 3 kilometers over the lake. <clears throat> and just coming down nice and slowly on the low gravity. But the problem is, because there's such low gravity, no matter what you do with your engines, it'll slow it down really dramatically. So unlike on the moon, you can't just come down like with nice ease at one speed. You have to kind of keep pumping your engines on and off. And I think I've put, yeah, I put this into normal-ish speed now. Um, but I'm not sure how untenuous my, my screen recorder is a little temperamental, so it might not be in full um, normal speed. But anyway, just so I can land and you can see what the landing actually looks like. That poodle engine's uh, pretty inefficient, but it's it's powerful enough. It's, it's, it's not particularly powerful, but it's powerful enough for this, obviously. It's a small ship. <clears throat> And I think right now, I think it was something like midnight when I was actually recording this, and I was getting pretty tired, so instead of taking all three men out, dancing around, I just take one guy out, because I, I, I was tired, and it was like 45 minutes, and I was like, I can't upload a 45 minute video, I'll try and shorten this a bit. <clears throat> Where then I scrapped the commentary and just fought, um, sped up the whole video, which it will be much better for everyone, and I stopped climbing down the ladder and just fall off, because... Well, I forgot to put ladder on the SAS, which I'll realise later. Anyway, if you jump on Minimus, you go pretty high, and there's really low gravity, so you can fall from pretty high and be fine. And so I decided to plant my flag, which you'll see my new tape gaming flag. Tape being an amalgamation of the first two letters of my second and first name. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, Kerbal X landing. So yeah, Kerbal X can do this, because I couldn't be bothered to write something serious. Anyway, uh, you can't really see it that well, but it's just kind of a black vector on a claret background with tape gaming written on it. You'll see it better next time I do something. And I decide to uh, jetpack up, which goes horribly, as you can see. I just bounce off the parachute and <clears throat> almost kill the Kerbal. Oh no, don't almost kill the Kerbal, there's like no gravity. Anyway, I decide, okay, swallow my pride, I'll just climb the ladder like an actual Kerbal. Yeah, um, and that goes just as badly. And you can see how massive the ship looks from a Kerbal's point of view. And I fall off because there's no ladder on the SAS um, unit, so... Yeah, you can just see me fumbling around trying to get into a spaceship like a moron. And now I go too high, 
I'll try and come back down, miss the thing, bounce a bit, kind of fumble around for ages, try and get it steady, because I'm not used to flying in there. Screw it again, I'm not used to flying on Minmus with RCS, or well, with a jetpack. So, yeah, I'm used to like Muna, Muna kind of flying, or like Duna. I oh, know, I've never used RCS on a uh, jetpack on Duna. Anyway, just kind of retract my ladder and get ready to go home. And I'm messing up and clicking wrong buttons, and there you go. And now I put it back to two times speed. Because this took a while. Uh, no, it didn't take a Well, it took a substantial amount of time, I suppose. I'm um, thinking get it into orbit. And then a bit through, I think, no, I'm going straight home, and I need to be relatively fuel efficient, because I only have 80 litres left. And I figure if I burn straight up, I'll get a good orbit around going. So I just kind of escape as fast as possible. And there you go, try and bring it down from here as much as possible. Um, but not enough, and I don't have enough fuel for that. So I just walk around to Apple Apps. Um, there you go. And burn, so I just kind of land straight down on the planet with no questions asked. Yeah, and that's in the planet now. Uh, I confirm that, <coughs> as I always do, and ditch my fuel stage, activate my parachute so when I come down. And I walk down at maximum speed, and something weird happens. I go through the planet. I walked so fast, I went through the planet. So what Kerbalex can actually do is break the laws of physics, which I think is far more impressive than landing on Minmus. But anyway, I'm, I'm sure that's a glitch in the game. Well, I, I'm, yeah, I am sure that's a glitch in the game. It was ridiculous if it's anything else. Anyway, I come in at like, uh, as fast as possible, at, like time warp, <clears throat> and it's warping twice, so my burning's really impressive and fast, and the SS rips off as it always does. And it comes down. <clears throat> pretty fast. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Now you know what Kerbalax can do. Try it out for yourself. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, this is KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.